Well, good day, everyone, and welcome back to the channel. All right, tonight I am doing the next step on a Rex knife, and I'm going to do it as a full grinding how-to video. And so we're going to start by cleaning up the scale from where we heat treated, uh, do it in parts. So doing the top part first, as you can see, a little bit of a patch in the center there. Um, there is slight bends even with using the plate uh, quench that it still picks up those really slight bends that you've got to grind out. And so just a matter of grinding it back and getting those pieces off as well as the rest of the carbon scoring. So across the face of the belt we go, as I said, I'm just working the tip of it at the moment, dunking in the bucket because it's really high pressure grinding. We want to make sure we're keeping it nice and cool not overheating it and not ruining the temper that we've put on. Okay, and you can see there, slight little bit left, but we've cleaned out most of that carbon section there. So I'll just clean that bit up. Okay, there we go, we've got that last piece of carbon out of there so now we go to the bottom and clean up the handle section of it so reattach the magnet so it's sitting at the bottom back on we go and just clean that bottom up as you can see that's going to clean a lot quicker I generally tend to work a bigger knife uh, that's not going to fit totally on the platen in this way so I'll do the tip first, then I'll do the handle, and then I'll grind the center. Just so the bottom grind and the top grind meet up. If I do the center, I can just sort of work it out that way. And that's what we're doing right at this stage. So we just gotta get that last piece of carbon out of the center and blend the top and bottom grind together. That's why lots of movement up and down just because I'm trying to blend the two grinds together. And again, quenching it down in that bucket down there. Just cleaning up any last sort of marks, making sure it all runs together. Okay, there we go. That side's all clean, all the grinds running together, looking beautiful. Okay, once we've cleaned off both sides, we just need to clean off the edges. So just go around, clean the back of it, just getting all that carbon off again. Uh, where it's carbonized, then you've lost a layer of carbon out of the inside of the knife and you just want to clean that back. Just taking it back to hard steel that hasn't lost the carbon and it's still going to be nice and strong. Once you lose a bit of carbon, then you weaken up the hardness of the steel. So there we go. Ground through the handle. And lastly, we'll just run the blade over. Last chance to get that sort of shape that I'm after. Our next step is once we've got it back to clean steel that we just want to mark a center line. The center line helps you to do your grinds and keep them central. Um, so they balance up together. Uh, generally the way I mark is a pair of lines, one from each side and that will give me a pair of lines to work to. So a permanent marker and then just across against my little Blade marking jig just has a little carbide point on it. Just scraping that edge across and it leaves a little score line. Now it is next to impossible to see in the video but there are two small little lines running there and by knowing Working down to those lines, I can work towards the center. Okay, now doing a chest knife is a lot more up and close and personal than doing something with a straight bevel. Um, right there against the belt 
it's freehand grinding and we've just got to be nice and close to it and work away now the first step is to take a bit of a sharper angle probably about uh, 30 degrees um, so what I'm trying to do is just grind down to the line that I've got on each side at that 30 degrees just helps me to set up those grinds um, and have that center in the right place so a couple of cuts now at this stage I'm not putting a whole lot of heat into the blade it's a brand new belt um, it cuts pretty clean it cuts pretty cold uh, once we start getting down a bit then we've got to start dipping the blade in the water a lot more so flip it around we go from the other side and again just working in at that 30 degrees and I'll keep working that down until they balance up okay now those initial bevels are set up and I've got to start cutting in the actual bevels so a lot flatter against the belt uh, at, this is the stage where you end up taking a bit of skin off your knuckles every now and again or trimming your fingernails it does tend to happen a bit when you do it on this 40 grip belt it hurts too so I'm a lot flatter on against the belt you know, it's down to oh, probably about five ten degrees it's very flat uh, sitting about the thickness of the steel off the belt at the bottom of it as you can see we're quenching it a lot now the trick here is I do an uneven bevel on it so at that heel end of the knife there is very slight pressure on the back and heavy pressure on the blade side and when we get to the other end, the pressure's on the spine and very light pressure on the blade side. So I want to get the bevel so it's running from smaller at the heel up to larger at the tip of the knife. And that'll give us a stronger cut section at the back. So if you're cracking something and you want to use cleaver style, it's at the back of the blade that you're working. For fine slicing you want to be able to do it at the tip. So as you can see we're just going through the grind. It does take a fair few cuts. There's no point trying to rush it. I want to set it up. Get those flats set up. And then just keep going. Okay, let's speed things up a bit. No one wants to sit there watching me grind steel all day. Okay, so once we've got those flats established, it is very easy to do this grind. The hard part is getting it set up. Uh, one is, once it is set up, because you end up with a huge flat bevel, it just wants to sit there every time as you go against. So we just keep grinding it through again and again. And just working down towards those bevels. Okay, and then we have the finished product. Is this? You can see it's much smaller at the heel than at the tip, and that's exactly what we want as we go into the next step. And we're up to the next stage of doing that convex bevel. Uh, what we're doing here is working on the slack belt it's using a 60 grit belt so it's a little bit finer than the 40 I used for the initial cut um, and we're just going along and trying to get the bevel that I've cut in and the flat to marry up um, rather than just blending it with sanding so it disappears we're actually cutting down the faces and the corners uh, so the two of them are in line with each other and gives one continuous finish. So 
there we go it's starting to look good now and you can see it still needs some work up near where the bolster is going to be so just very light grinding for that no pressure at all whereas there's a fair bit of pressure when you're actually doing the convex part then we spin around to the other way and exactly the same thing over again you notice the angle that I've got it on, uh, it's not the straight up and down which we cut the flats on and it's not the 90 degrees against which we cut the bevel in with. So I can see when the flat lines disappear, I can also see when the bevel lines disappear. Okay, we're just about finished that second side, just working up in that handle zone. Yeah, it's trying to get all the scratches out. As you can see, I flash it about a fair bit. That's just trying to see where all the scratches are. I have about five different lights in the garage uh, with both warm white and also bright white. Just the different lights in different positions help me to pick up the scratches a whole lot easier. And so we just keep grinding it and until we get that nice smooth finish. Last grinds, you want to go all the way from the heel of the knot, heel of the blade up to the tip of the blade, just so it blends well. Okay, next we're going to go up to a 120 grip belt, and as you can see, we're going 90 degrees across the belt, so in a totally different direction from the last cut. So all the scratches are going to run in a different direction, it makes it all nice and clear for it to stand out. Just dip it in the water as you, we go. As you can see, it's cut well in the center. Still needs a little bit on the outside edges. And that's just part of forming that convex. So it's still taking a little bit more meat out of that center section than it is out of the edges. We just got to adjust the grinding to suit. Sometimes a little bit more pressure. As you can see, that second hand on there just pressed down a bit harder and that'll bow the belt down, which means that we end up grinding in a tighter curve. A bit of quenching as we go. Lighter pressure up near the handle, heavier pressure as we go down through the bevel. We don't want to put too much curve up where the bolster attaches, so that's why we want to keep the pressure fairly light up there. Doing it this way, you will get a little bit of curving in the bolster location, but you want to make sure that it's as little as possible. And that way when you're putting your bolster on, it's not going to leave obvious gaps there. Okay, next up we're using a 180 grit belt. I do go through a lot of extra grits when I'm doing these ones um, because you really struggle if you skip grits to get up to the finish that you're after. Um, and again, change of angle. This time it's on a completely different angle and that way we can just make sure that it comes clear. As you can see, it was really light pressure back at the handle and now that I'm cutting the blade section fair bit of pressure and it's throwing a fair bit of spark out so we'll go through the 180 on both sides and then we will swap out okay this one is the 240 grit as you can see I switched up the angle again and totally different angle I want to make sure that my final cut which is my 400 grit which is the one after this I want it to go at right angles to the blade because that's how I like to finish the grind so we'll just run through the 240 again just taking out the scratches from the 180 once that's all done then we're ready to go to the 400 
and here is the 400. Uh, this is the final grinding grit that I take it to. Um, I'll take it up to the 400, and then once I've got the maker's mark in it, I'll use a 600 cork belt to finish it off. But that's only after the maker's mark is in. I don't want to put the maker's mark in and then cut extra steel away. So we just use the cork belt to finish it off once the maker's mark's done. So again, just running through this 400 grit. Uh, it's straight up and down on the blade, which is how I like to finish my chefs nice. Um, and we just run through until we get all the diagonal scratches out. And we're ready to go through to Maker's Mark after that. Now the very final thing I do here is clean up the back of the blade. Not so much worried about the handle section of it. Uh, more the spine going forward because that will be covered up and protected while I'm working on the handle. So I want to have a nice finish underneath that protection so I don't then have to go through and re-grind that. Now doing this, I don't need to use all the belts that I used for grinding the bevel. Um, I start with the 120, I'm then going to go to a 240, and finally finish up at the 400. And these are my old belts that were used on the bevel. They're a bit rough and worn out, but they will work perfectly for that edge grinding. If you use them for edge grinding before you use them for the flat grinding, you are going to end up putting a groove in them and they will not work as well for grinding on the flats. So it's actually a really quick process just cleaning up that edge and as I said that's just that final little bit of grinding. Well there we are that is the end of the process for doing the convex bevels to a chef's knife. Hopefully you enjoyed this hopefully it taught you something and yeah come along watch again and see how we do some of the other grinds i uh, do have you know basic bevel grinds and that sort of thing on the channel you know by all means have a look see how they're done well thank you very much everyone for watching and bye for now